today, I think I'd like to discuss the perceived ongoing clash between casual and hardcore gamers. More specifically, I want to address the omnipresent, self-deceived nepotism of so many communities in the world of video games. It's not uncommon for a given group to sequester themselves from the other, to self-segregate to better accommodate their subconscious desire for a cloistered, masturbatory coven of like-minded fucking losers, but it seems like this activity is almost placed at a premium today. And it's particularly prevalent among gamers. And the gaming media almost seems complicit in perpetuating the narrative of hardcore versus the dreaded casual. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if a 10-ton belugal homunculus whose name rhymes with fucking Jim Sterling writes an article on the subject, you'll read it. You'll comment on it, whether to verify or repudiate its validity. What matters at the end of the day to a website that subsists almost entirely on ad revenue is the number of hits that a given web page generates. Full stop. And when you see these articles climbing into the thousands of comments, never mind millions of unique hits, it's not hard to grasp why the narrative persists, you know? CNN would happily tell you a fucking bedtime story every night if they thought it would draw ratings. Why should the video game media, which has even fewer journalistic credentials than the empty suits on CNN, be any different? What's worse is that this fictitious narrative is burgeoned to the extent that life is beginning to imitate art. Only a cursory glance at communities like the Bioware Social Network or SureYouCan.com is needed to verify what I'm fucking telling you here. Somewhere along the way, hardcore gamers actually began to see five-year-old children who only play Banjo-Kazooie every weekend or so as the fucking barbarian horde at the gates. My favorite video game of all time is Thief 2 The Metal Age. The Thief series, as a lot of you may know, has one of the most active, obsessive, and frankly irrational fan bases on the protracted insanity test that is the planet Earth. Over on the TTLG forums, through the Looking Glass, they actually describe the inclusion of an optional third-person perspective in the upcoming Fourth Thief title as, and I quote, a perversion. PERVERSION! Now, call me old-fashioned, but I happen to think the only time you should use the word perversion as a descriptor is during either a child molestation case or while donning your leather mask and informing your significant other that the safe word is fucking Winnebago or some shit. For the love of vaginal intercourse, it's a fucking video game. We're not negotiating terms of surrender with the North Korean forces. We're making suggestions to a video game developer concerning what we'd like to see in the next installment. The smug overload of the bullshit artists between the Twin Perfect YouTube channel have now essentially made it impossible to divorce the public's perception of the Silent Hill fan base from these two grating, obnoxious man-children too busy sobbing about continuity-related minutia and slipshod translation to actually process whether each game in the series is actually meritorious in its own right. Mind you, they're wailing and gnashing their teeth about bad translation and at the same time, they think the Japanese word namai is pronounced namai. That is some weapons-grade Hannah Minx guide Japanese shit right there. And these motherfuckers should be laughed off the face of YouTube. And oh, looky-loo, now Twin Perfect requires uploader approval to uh, post a comment on any of their fucking videos. Which I suppose we all should have had the foresight to anticipate, considering one of these witless toolboxes looks like the autistic love child of the amazing atheist and the fucking irate gamer. Which still puts him in advance of his pal who looks like Shemp fucked Howdy Doody, then ingested 12 bricks of black tar heroin, I'd tell these self-righteous piss ants to fuck themselves, but I'm fairly certain they'd first have to slip their right hand the date rape drug. Their fucking level of frenzied fanaticism, it's given me Jonestown flashbacks, and with the way certain gaming forums are run these days, can anyone say the Spoonie experiment? Being a complete unyielding bastard is officially fucking required with something, something resembling religious furor. And that's really the problem at the end of the day here. It's not the Gnostic Order of the Holy Digital Sepulchre, it's a fucking video game! While anyone even casually acquainted with my show is well aware of my feelings regarding the self-evident streamlined shitstorm we're currently reinforcing our figurative levies against, at the end of the day, it's just a video game. If you devoted your creative and vitriolic energies as readily to, say, politics or world events, as to games involving a mildly obese plumber who fights a giant snapping turtle, we might not be facing the electoral equivalent of Dumb and Dumber this fucking November. As a rule, if you find yourself spewing more venom in the direction of Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft fanboys than at terrorists in dirty nightgowns decapitating innocent American or European tourists in Syria or Afghanistan, yeah, go ahead and have a 12-gauge lobotomy, courtesy of Razor Fist, you 
quivering, tremulous conglomeration of wasted flesh and organs. I'm Razor Fist God. Fucking speed.